Every time I look at a brand new distro, or at least a distribution that is new to me, one of the questions that I ask is why does that distribution exist? Like, I always think that there has to be at least some reason for that distro to exist. And it doesn't really have to be an important reason. It can be just simply that the developers want to have a Arch-based distro that looks different. Whatever it happens to be. Maybe it has some rices or it has a few specialized application. It really doesn't matter what the reason is, as long as I can find a reason for it to exist. The distributions that I haven't liked over the last few years when I've made videos about them are the distros that don't really have that unique qualifying feature of having at least something, even if it's really minimal, to justify their reason for being. The distro I'm looking at today, called AV Linux, is definitely not a distribution that is shy about telling its users why it exists. It's right in the name, AV, Audio Visual. Now, the whole shtick behind this distribution is that it's meant to have things installed for you if you're a content creator of some sort. If you deal with pretty much anything in audio or video, this distribution is meant for you. That's the goal behind its development. So the question then becomes is, does it succeed in its purpose? Is it any good for the people who it's supposed to be targeting? Does it provide those people with something that is valuable? That's the question we're going to talk about today. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the website. So the website, as you can see, is fairly well designed. A couple things that I noticed right off the bat trying to get here is that it does not appear at least for me in Google search results. So if you search for AV Linux, you're actually going to get, at least as the first result, DistroWatch. And I think that the reason why the AV Linux website itself isn't something that comes up right up on top is because it doesn't have an SSL certificate. So I think Google filters all that kind of stuff out that doesn't have the SSL certificate enabled. So maybe that's the reason why it doesn't get ranked in the SEO or whatever. But just know that if you search for this on Google or any other search engine, you may not find this. It also doesn't have its own URL, so that could also be a problem. Outside of that, the website is actually fairly well stocked in terms of stuff that you'd be interested in. And it's all, as you'll come to know very much targeted at people who are content creators or at least enthusiasts in the audio visual space. So people who are interested in applications that deal with audio and video, everything that's on this website, everything that is packed into AV Linux is dedicated to those people. The next thing you'll probably notice is that this is in fact based on MX Linux. Now, that in itself is pretty interesting because I don't know that there's actually any other distributions that are actually based on MX Linux. Now, MX Linux itself is based on another distribution, which is in fact based on another distribution. So this is one of those distributions that's kind of well into the family tree, if you will. But there aren't any others that I can think of off the top of my head that are actually based on MX itself, which is, again, kind of cool because I love MX Linux. And I think that that is a solid base for a distribution to be based off of. With it being based on MX, obviously you're going to have a Debian underpinning of everything there. So you're going to have access to the Debian repositories and the Debian issues that always kind of crop up with running Debian. But you'll also have that stability, which is something that a lot of content creators really want. So let's take a gander around the website just for a minute here. You'll find links to documentations. You'll find links to the downloads as well. You can find links to ways to support them as well right here all on the front page and then you also find a link to the MX Linux version that comes with LXDE which looks like this I did not download this version I chose the AV Linux MX edition which comes with Openbox and XFCE and uses the high performance LaCroix kernel I'm sure I completely butchered that <laughs> I'm sure there's somebody out there who I, don't, I, I have no clue how to pronounce that, but liquor, li liquorix, liquorix, but it's probably, I don't know. I, I'm sure somebody out there is like, Matt, don't even try to do that anymore. <laughs> just stop, just stop, please. Please stop trying to pronounce things that you can't pronounce. It's okay, I'll stop. All right. <laughs> Moving on. On this page here, you'll also get links to the documentation, links to the downloads, and some information 
over what it includes. So you'll get to see this system is tuned out of the box for fast, low latency audio performance, seamless jack pulse audio integration, and optional support for Windows audio and plug-in applications through Wine staging. Current AV Linux MX Edition is recognized by MX Linux and use, utilizes its build tools and packaging, but is not an official MX Linux product. So let's jump out of the website. There's a lot more stuff here for you to get into on your own. Let's go ahead and show you the installation. So if you've ever installed MX Linux before, you'll see that this is basically the MX Linux installer. In fact, it's almost identical. And that's okay. It's not the most intuitive of installers out there. I'll just put that out there for sure. But it's also not the hardest. So it's very simple. has four or five steps. One of the coolest things that I've always enjoyed about the MX installer is that it starts installing almost literally after the second step. So once you've told it where to install, it starts installing. So as you go through the rest of the process of choosing your username and password, giving it a host name, and things like that, you will already be in the process of installing it. So a lot of times by the time you actually get to the last step, it's almost done installing completely, which is a great idea. I know Ubuntu does this, it, where it starts installing at a certain point before you're even done set, filling out the installation options or the user options and I think that that's great this does a little bit better job of that and that it's really quick so I think a lot of distributions should kind of do that because that waiting period after you've met the last step of installation usually takes five or six minutes if you can cut some of that time down by having it so that you're still working on the installation options you know, that saves people some time, which is really cool. It makes it feel even faster, even though the, the install itself wasn't slow. So once you've installed it, you're going to get something in like this. And it is a custom Grub theme, which is kind of nice. You don't have just the black screen like you normally would. but So you get some color there, which is nice. You get the normal line of text there at the beginning, which you get with pretty much every Linux distribution. And then you're given this. Now... I have no clue what display manager this is. No clue whatsoever. I don't know if it's custom or if it's LMDE and they've just themed it or if it's SDDM and they've themed it or if it's GDM and they've themed it. I have no clue. And in fact, I don't even know how you would go about changing the session. So as you saw in the website, this comes with Openbox and XFCE. So how do you change the session? Because I don't see any buttons here, so I have no clue. Also, I don't understand why the please login colon is on the bottom. It's weird. You also have welcome user up there with a colon. So you it's not really, I mean, it's, it's a little weird, right? And, and this is going to be a VM problem. If you see, you can see my cursor over there. If I go over here into the actual VM, my cursor disappears. So there's no cursor here whatsoever, but I don't think you actually need one. But again, that means that there doesn't appear to be any way to change the session. And again, it's going to actually ask you for your user, so I'm going to ha have to redo this. So I'll type in my actual username this time. So there's no way for your user to actually already be selected. You have to enter your username here instead of it being already there for you. Then you can, I can enter my password. So here we go. We're going to go into uh, what I believe is Openbox. It does take a little while to show up. And once it does show up, this is what you're presented with. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before we go and take a look here at the welcome screen is open up a terminal and type in xrander-s1920x1080. And actually, did that right. Yeah, like that. There we go. Now, it definitely does look better at full resolution, that's for sure. But one thing that I'm going to tell you right now is that if I were to use this, I would change that cursor because that cursor is horrendous. Like, it is so bad. I think it's supposed to be like a guitar pick. Looks like a flower petal and is mostly useless. I mean, that is not a good cursor whatsoever. It looks cartoony and this is supposed to be for professor professionals. So I'm not sure why they chose that cursor. I mean, it'd be easy enough to change. Again, not that important, but it's the first thing... The first thing out of the box that you see is that, 
and that is a, an immediate thing that just like oh, I don't know I don't like that so much. But anyways, here is the welcome screen. AV Linux MX Edition 21.1. The multimedia content creation focus AV Linux has provided since 2008 is now combined with the powerful versatility of MX Linux. AV Linux MX Edition comes with a high performance kernel. <laughs> the light and configurable open box window manager and the efficient yet full featured XFC for desktop environment. In addition to the whole host of useful tools, including the venerable MX tools paired with the convenience of the AAVL MXE assistant, this system is tuned out of the box for fast low latency audio. So this is basically the same spiel they had on the website. Okay, so uh, take your time, look around and try things out. If you wish to install, simply right click on the desktop and the installer is at the top of the open box menu, which is an interesting thing because this is already installed. Okay, so one thing about Linux is that when you've installed something, like when you install Ubuntu, you don't still get access to the installer once it's been installed. That's not something that happens with Ubuntu, with Arch, with Fedora, none of those things. Like when you've installed it, the installer's gone, but not so with AV Linux. And the thing is, is even with MX Linux, that's not true as far as I'm aware. Like you can't still get to the, the installer once you've installed MX. I'm pretty sure that's true. And that means that this is a little weird. I mean, it's not the big a deal. It's, it's there, but it's definitely something that you have to deal with. So you, along the bottom, you get in links to install the hardware drive, which is already done. Read, read the manual and close. That's the welcome screen. We're going to go ahead and don't show again. Okay. So this is the open box window manager. And I'm not sure if I misinterpreted the website or not, because the website makes it seem like the open box and the XFCE thing are all on the same ISO. So it's possible that I just messed this up and that there are actually, okay, so that one's not useful because they truncate the thing. So let's see here. Yeah, I don't see an XFCE version there. That's just one ISO. So that means XFCE is probably on here somewhere. And like I said at the beginning, or when we looked at that display manager, it didn't, I didn't see a place to actually switch sessions. We'll have to go back and look at that. So it doesn't matter. We'll see if we can find that later on. So along the bottom here, we have a little dock. We have Firefox as the web browser. This is the file manager, which is going to be, I believe that's Thunar. That is, yeah, that's Thunar. Okay, that's good. Thunar is a good file manager. Opens up in full screen by default. So I was wondering if it was a tiling layout because I can't actually make this smaller. So if I click this, that's how you make it smaller. Okay, so if it's full screen, like this, and this might be an open box thing. Like I've never actually used open box, but you can't drag a full screen down and have it minimized. You have to actually click the button. Okay, that that would be kind of annoying, but you know, whatever. So that is Thunar along the bottom here. We also have the MX package installer, which looks like this. So it's asking for pseudo permissions. So, and yeah, that's the MX installer. That's a very good package manager, like a GUI package manager. It gives you access to the stable repos, the MX test repo, the Debian back quartz repos, flat packs is right here out of the box. So that means you're going to have a wide variety of software available to you that isn't already installed. So if you need to find something, you can probably find it here. And the fact that Flatpaks is here by default means that you're going to have access to even more software. Why they ask for a password again, I'm not sure. That's gonna take, oh, it's because it's going to be doing a update of the mirrors. Okay, so that takes a little bit. Okay, what else is long here along the bottom? We have open windows. Those are the open windows there though. So, and then some widgets along the bottom. So we have like a, a volume widget, a network widget. So if you click that, you're going to have the list of your networks. And then you're going to have an updates widget. So just tell you to have updates. And you have the thing to power off the system. Here we have the menu, which is the whisker menu. I believe that's the whisker menu. That's from XFCE. And we can go through some of the applications that are installed. So where AV Linux is supposed to shine is with the applications that are installed that are targeted towards people who can create content either in the audio or visual sphere. So as we go through these, we'll kind of pay attention to see if they've kind of met that goal or if they have meandered a little bit too far outside of it, if you will. We'll see how that goes. So we have the user manual here, archive manager. Those are things that are usual. A uh, BPI top, which is a 
resource monitor that appear, should appear in the terminal, which it does. I believe BPyTop has actually been updated to BTOP now, but I don't know, so I don't know if that's still maintained or not, but it's still a good resource monitor. We have also Mixer here, so that's our first audio application. An appearance menu here, this is going to be, f that's going to be part of the XFCE suite of things. So I'm wondering if there's not actually like a separate, there's not a separate XFCE session, it's just more of a situation where XFC and Openbox have kind of been combined into one. That's possible. In which case, and actually I'm guessing that's exactly what we're seeing, is a combination of those two. We have Ardour, which is installed. This is going to be a audio DAW, multi-track audio application that is a professional version of like something like Audacity, right? So this is what Ardour looks like, and it is a professional version of what you'd get if you download something like audacity or something like that this is going to have a lot more professional type features so moving on we have audacity is also here a a vid a vidimux avid emux multi-platform video editor i have never not w once ever seen that before or ever heard of it before to be very truthful with you i have no clue how it works if it's any good I have no clue. It's something that I'd definitely be interested in trying. I've never heard of it before. Avid, Avid Emux. I mean, I've heard of Avid before. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it right. That's interesting. So that's a video editor. What else do we have? So we have some quick setup utility here. I wonder what this looks like. So change desktop wallpaper, change display settings, change system GTK theme. See, so a link to this thing here would actually be very interesting in the welcome screen because you may not ever know that this thing actually exists if you don't go spelunking through the menu. We have some utilities here. So this is going to be the also jack snapshot open, op also jack snapshot save. I'm not sure what those, I don't use jack, so I'm not sure what those things mean. The BPM converter, check system resources, enable Funar scripts. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, kill jack processes, real time config scan, refresh icon caches. Set CPU governor and wallpaper generator. One of these things is not like the other. I want to click on this one and see what this is. By default, AV AVL MXE has Thunar File Manager set up to run scritch scripts when clicked on in the file manager. This is useful for the launching of the dot run files Ardour and Mixbus utilize. You should also need to rerun that script the script if that functionality ceases. If you don't want this at any point or if you are unsure simply type no so i'm not going to install that but that's interesting that they've set that up I d it's a script that will allow funar to execute scripts by double clicking on them so that's kind of cool and it's specifically for a reason that some of the applications that include tend to have scripts that come in like that and it's a good way to allow people who may not be familiar with running scripts to install them without having to deal with terminals which may make them uncomfortable. So we have a application here to edit the bash config. That's an MX Linux tool. We have Bleach, Bleach Bit here installed by default. Bluetooth Manager by default. We have Browser Virtual C Drive. I have no clue what that is. Oh, it's going to be for Wine. Okay. So, oh yeah, that's right. When you install something through Wine, it actually does create a virtual C Drive. I've forgotten about that. It's been a long time since I've ever had to actually install anything with Wine that wasn't through Proton as well. So I, I had totally forgotten about that. We have bulk rename, which is a function of Thunar. We have the path plugin pack for Jack. So that's going to be part of the Jack suite. Catfish file search, a tool here to configure Wine, a, here, a tool here to configure the Conky, which is that thing there on the desktop. Uh, Conky toggle, both of those things here, by the way, are MX Linux tools. Default applications, which is an XFCE. Option disk manager, which is probably going to be GNOME disks. No, that's going to be the MX Linux tool for managing devices. Okay. I forgot that they had the same name. Easy tag that will edit MP3 tags for music. Featherpad, which is a text editor. That's Thunar. Firefox. Firewall configuration, so it comes with UFW installed. Probably. Gparted. Interestingly, they have two things here to edit partitions. Uh, Gpick, which is a color picker. Guitarix, which is a simple mono amplifier simulation. So that's going to be something for people who play guitar, probably, I'm guessing. I've never actually heard of it before, but it's cool. A video viewer and capture for Linux UVC driver. Not sure what that is. 
So you, I, you can tell that there's a lot of stuff in the audiovisual sphere that I'm just not familiar with. And a lot of the stuff would be overkill kill for what I do. So the person who recommended this to me probably had an overestimation of the things that I do on audio. Audacity is literally all I ever need. But if you are a content creator that gets deep into the audio stuff, like if you need like MIDI support and you're creating music and stuff like that, a lot of these tools are probably familiar with for you. So take my ignorance with a grain of salt as you should. Just know that these things are installed for you if you need them. Handbrake transcodes videos, which is interesting that that's here. Harrison Consoles Digital Audio Workstation. Helm, which is a synth, I believe. And HTOP is here as well. Hydrogen, which will, is uh, for drum sequences. Drum, drum sequ Wow, I can't speak today. iDevice Monitor, which is a GUI for mounting iPhones. Uh, I've never seen that pre-installed on, on a Linux distribution before, so that's very interesting. They have Inkscape here which is a vector creation software. Caden Live, which is our second video editor. Ksnip is a screenshot tool. I don't think Ksnip is a KDE tool, though. Is it? I wonder, I'm wondering if it is. I mean, it'd be kind of odd that they named it Ksnip if it wasn't a KDE application. But the KDE application for creating screenshots is called Spectacle, not Ksnip. So Ksnip is a cute application. I'm not sure if, it, if that means that it is a KDE application or not. But, I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, that was that just kind of caught my interest because I'd never actually heard of it before. Um, because I knew that the KDE application for creating screenshots was spectacle. The media info supplies technical and, and tagged information about an audio or video file. Uh, Midnight Commander is here. I think Midnight Commander is on MX Linux by default too, so that's going to be an MX Linux thing. Mousepad is another text editor. MPV is a video player. Uh, MX boot option is obviously for MX Linux. Muse Score 3 is going to be to create music scores. That's the same company that owns Audacity, I believe. So that's interesting. Uh, MX Cleanup, these are all the MX tools, which is cool. good that they're here. Although I didn't see, at least so far, I haven't seen the snapshot tool. MX Repo Manager, oh, there it is right there. I spoke too soon. MX Tools, that's going to be to create our configuration stuff for MX Linux. MX Tweak is going to be is going to offer a lot of tweaks for the window manager itself. I wonder how it works with OpenBox. We have a link to uninstall software. We have Transmission. We have Citala, which is a drum sampler. Synaptic Package Manager, which is the second package manager on here. I believe MX Linux comes with both as well, to be truthful. There is a Set Be Free, which is a MIDI controlled software synthesizer. So there's a couple synthesizers on here. Pulse Audio, Pavu Control is here, because this does use Pulse Audio and not Pipewire, Reaper and Linux, which is a DAW. So this is like our doer, our doer. <laughs> I can't talk today with the damn. Uh, so this is a, the second DAW we have. So there's a lot of Jack applications here. There's a sound font editor, OBS Studios here, Mystic Q Multimedia Converter. So that's going to be something that probably is a front end for FFmpeg, but or they use something different, I guess. It's, that's possible. I'm sure FFmpeg is probably already installed as well. Let's go back down here where we were. A uh, VLC is here, so that's going to be the second media player you have. They do have a couple terminals. So they have the XFC terminal and XTerm is here. And then they have another synthesizers. And then they have Yadbridge. So those are the applications they have installed. Eh, so he, a few things. So first of all, there's a lot of stuff there that I had no clue what it is. So let's just be honest about that. That's not surprising with this kind of stuff because I've never really delved deep into the whole audio video editing thing i'm very simple when it comes to those things another thing you'll notice is there's a lot of overlap here so there's a couple video editors there's two or three synths now the the synth thing doesn't actually surprise me because the people who are into that kind of stuff usually use more than one as far from the people i've talked to they usually use more than one. But there are also other overlapping things, things like multiple terminals, things like multiple video players. So we got VLC and MPV. You had a couple of DAWs that are in there. So you do have some overlap here, which is not always my favorite thing, but it's not hard to uninstall those things. Also, the point of this distro is to give people who are interested in this type of thing an idea of what kind of software is available. By having it pre-installed, it means that people can try it and figure out which is best for them. So I'm not going to be as hard on this distro for having overlapping software as I would be on any other distro that is just a distro for no purpose. This one here has a purpose and a reason for including all this stuff, which makes it perfectly okay for me. It's not so bloated that you, you know, it, 
hurts my feelings or anything. So those are the software things that are installed. Now, the thing that continues to baffle me a little bit is what we're actually running here. Because this look at this is supposed to be open box. Let's see if we have NeoFetch installed. We do. So this is the window manager is open box, but the desktop. Okay, so that's exactly what it is. Like I said before, this is actually XFCE, but with the open box window manager on top of it instead of using the XFC window manager. So that is an interesting thing. I've never, I've seen it done by other people. I've never seen it done by a distro before. So that's kind of cool. So this is using the kernel 5.16, which is not the newest, but not the oldest. It's running bash 5.1. And they're actually using a nerd font inside this terminal, which makes it really cool. <laughs> I've never actually seen a lot. Of, well, I haven't seen many distros at least use a nerd font out of the box. It makes me kind of happy because nerd fonts are awesome if for only having a cool name so one thing you'll notice there is that the memory usage even with all the stuff open is only at 704 megabytes we'll see what free says because free measures different better different than neofetch using 518 and that's with all the stuff open so we have the appearance thing open we have the mx utilities open we have the MX package installer open, we have Thunar open, we have a terminal open, and we're still only using 518 megabytes of RAM. Let's close these things. And this cursor would drive me absolutely bonkers because it's hard to click on things. I'd have to set up a key binding or get rid of the cursor, I suppose. Let's go ahead and run that again and see what we're at now, 462. So that is on the low side when it comes to RAM usage. And that's really good. So that means that there's more RAM available for you to do things that are going to require more RAM, like record audio and record video and things like that. So I have to say there are two things that come, come to mind immediately when I use or as I've been using this. The first is that I'm not enamored with the look and feel all that much. I don't know what that display manager is at the beginning. Is, and it's not well designed. I don't care for having to type in my username. Whenever there's one, just one user, it should come up automatically. And almost every display manager does that for you. It's possible that if I were to log out now, it might remember my name. But that first time you come to it, it doesn't know your name. And if you don't pay attention like I didn't, you just enter your password. You actually enter your password as your username. So that's not a big deal. Uh, the second thing I, that I noticed when it comes to look and feel is that cursor. I mentioned it before. It's not a great cursor. I, I know I'm harping on it, but it's just first impressions, right? Uh, the, the third thing is that I'm not a big fan of this particular layout when it comes to Openbox. I've seen Openbox look really, really good. Like, Openbox is very much a customizable window manager, and... It means that you can, if you put effort into it, you can make it look fantastic. You know, whether whether you use something like EWW or whether you use something like Tint2, you can make Openbox look spectacular. And while this isn't the most ugly desktop environment slash window manager I've ever seen, it's definitely not the prettiest either. And like I said, those first impressions are going to be very important for a lot of people. But I think that for most people, they're going to be here for the software that comes pre-installed. So the underlying tweaks that they've made to make Jack work really well, the things that have, they've done to make Pulse Audio work really well and in conjunction with Jack, the tools that they've included to allow you to manage Jack, the software that they've included so that you can edit and capture audio and video very easily, all that stuff is why you would install this distribution. Now, the question then becomes, is it a good enough distribution for you to install outside of that? And I would have to say probably because it is based on MX Linux and MX Linux is a very good distribution. It has all the MX tools included with it. So you get all the cool stuff that MX Linux comes with. You do have to deal with the whole idea of it not being systemd. You can run it as systemd if you want to. I know that for sure. 
but out of the box it's not system d so you do have to deal with that but most people probably won't even notice that it's not running system d and because it has all those mx tools and it's based on debian you're going to have a very stable system to work with and as i showed you with the package manager you do have a wide selection of software available to you not only from the debian and mx repositories but also from flat hub and flat pack so there's not going to be a lot of software here that you can't download which is good because a lot of the Debian stuff is going to be a little bit old. So if you want something more new, chances are it's probably going to be available to you through Flatpak, which is good. So let's take a look before we leave and see what other kind of customization stuff they have. Because there's also other stuff here that they allow you to customize. So here's the open box configuration manager. And you can choose a lot of stuff for, so you can choose different themes. So it has a light and a dark theme. And... Then you have some older style themes as well. So you do have some ac access to some themes as well. You can also install new themes if you can find where they're stored. I'm assuming you probably could find them on the internet somewhere. There's some appearance settings. There is some options for how windows are treated. They have some options here for moving and resizing windows. And dialogues, they have options here for the mouse and how it focuses. They have some options here for creating virtual desktops. They have some options here for margins along the desktop. I'm not sure what those what that means. Desktop margins are reserved areas on the edge of your screen. New windows will not be able to place. Basically, that looks like it's gaps. So, cool. It has gaps. Now, this is the dock. I'm not sure what they use for a dock. That might be plank or based on plank. You know, preferences. No, that's good. All right. So, that's just going to be a basic XFC for panel that they've customized to look like a dock so it does give you some options there for how it behaves which is cool so those are the configuration options for open box the one thing I didn't see here system is the system settings manager that you usually see with XFC all that's all the regular stuff is here but I don't oh, it is here it's right here yeah and they've added all of their stuff that they've added that we saw before all the AVL MXE stuff that we saw, saw in the menu so the one thing that XFC does a little bit differently than a lot of other desktop environments is they allow very easily the distro maintainer to add stuff to their settings. So you get things like the iDevice monitor that wouldn't normally be here. The things like the firewall configuration thing that wouldn't normally be here. All the, the MXE stuff here that wouldn't normally be here. So that's that's all of the stuff will also have entries in the menu, which has always been something that has kind of made me not like xfce as much even though i really like xfce the duplicate nature of it has always been a little weird to me but i know a lot of people like that so anyways that's that let's see what else they have here in the menu so they have created several assistant applications so things like the quick settings which we looked at earlier things like the system utilities which we looked at earlier things like the package settings which which seems to interact with the kernel I'm not sure exactly what those things do, and I'm not, I've never actually heard of that kernel before, which is why I couldn't pronounce it, so I don't know, like I said, I'm not sure what those things do. I'm sure it's probably in the user manual somewhere, if you need to know the specifics, some wine settings, and then system, uh, system editor here, which is going to be a place where you can find the configuration files. Cool. Okay. So that's most of the settings, and that's mostly uh, AV Linux. It's basically... At the end of the day, it's MX Linux with XFCE with OpenBox on top of it with a whole bunch of software that is dedicated towards the goal of making it easy to create content, whether that is audio or video. And that's an overall good thing. It definitely has a point of existing. And because it's XFCE, you could theoretically do pretty much whatever you want with it. And if you're familiar with OpenBox, I'm sure that opens up even more opportunities to customize the experience of it as well. I've never used OpenBox before other than a few like brief passes by, so I don't know a ton about it. But I can see how it has some options for the user to customize, probably like any other window manager. You can get into a configuration file somewhere and customize to however you want. So lots of software, easy customization, runs on MX Linux, so it's going to be stable. That is AV Linux. I have to say, outside of the look and feel, I'm pretty impressed with it because it does come with a lot of software. Out of the box, that's great. 
I think. So that's it for this video. In the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on AV Linux. I'd love to hear from you. This is the last first look distribution video that I'm going to make like this. The next one I do will be from hardware and it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be structured a little bit differently. So be prepared for that. If you want to see how that turns out, make sure you hit the subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter at the Linuxcast if you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey or any of those other places, you can find those links in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I'd like to thank my current patrons and the people who support me on YouTube. I truly do appreciate it. Every single video I say how I appreciate you guys for supporting me, and it's the honest God truth. I just never do a very good job or a very eloquent job of saying how grateful I am. So I just never can really find the words, so I just babble on and tell the scrolling is done so thank you for your support thank you for watching i'll see you next time